Good pocket. I say that as you choke two shots. I did. That's okay. Still winnable. <laughs> no way. Just... No way. Object permanence. <laughs> uh, object permanence. He jumped up and I was just like, what do I do? <laughs> that is that is hilarious. That was really funny. I was freaking out. It's just so slow. And and this is like this has to change. <laughs> yeah. Right. So this is this is bad, like regardless of whether it's on a 10 or 12 second or even a six second cooldown, right? But mm -hmm. it's so much worse because of the 12 second cooldown, right? Because you know right. like Let's just count down, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's your nade opportunity there. Seven, eight. There's another nade opportunity there. Mm -hmm. You kind of see what I'm saying? So it's like, it, yeah. it's it's kind of like Disruptor Shot from Sojourn, but it's worse because it's even more powerful. Um, so what I would do is I would do like what I what I coach Sonics, uh, Sonics, Hanzo's to Sonic, excuse me, where it's assess the situation first, then right. nade. This nade is not yeah. well-timed, right? Because there's only so much duration. So even if it puts out a little bit of pressure, you'd prefer pressure once the fight actually starts, which is about right. now. You kind of see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then also you assess the situation and you, and you go like, okay, I see Sigma. I hear Bastion. I hear Bap. Maybe I see Reaper as well. How does that affect your positioning? Um, Nothing crazy. I don't crazy. really have to play like, as far back as I sure. am. I can play that left... So I can sure. be a little bit more, more aggressive. The, the yes. Right. So then you see how that affects your nade usage. So you're able to adjust your positioning to something that's a little bit more favorable, a little bit easier, maybe a better sightline, different sightline for a nade. And then all of a sudden you can go from there. So like a scout comp, establish your positioning, use your CDs. That's kind of like what you want to be doing. Um, now obviously right. you should be thinking about nade when you pick a position, but that doesn't mean that you have to nade as soon as you pick, uh, as soon as you see. It. So kind of a consistent theme here. And now that we kind of talked about what we want to see, now all we have to do is ask you, how do you actually match what we talked about with uh, what you see in your screen? So in other words, we see this. Um, what do you think yeah. about that? That one's just bad. Just awful. I think that whenever I play on it, I have a really bad habit of playing on autopilot. Just because yeah. like, it's easier for me to hit like my shots that way, I guess. Instead of like actively thinking about everything that I'm doing. Now, why and is that should... harder that with Kiriko? Because you're obviously contrasting that with Kiriko. So why? Um, What's different with Kiriko for you? I guess Kiriko, like, I'm just forced to think about it a lot more because I'm trying to play it in, like, an aggressive play style. So it just mm -hmm. makes me, like, I'm just more worried about me dying. And the problem with that, though, is that an autopiloted Rissa will lose just as many games as an autopiloted Winston, but you won't really feel it. Right. So, like, you you will not get value out of this nade. Right. And that will potentially lose you this fight. But right. you won't think back to this moment and go, oh, yeah, I threw the fight here. You'll just think, oh, I didn't die, yet we still... Like, like for example, last fight, right? You, mm -hmm. you, you lost the fight, but it didn't feel like you fed, right? Like, you hit a sleep dart, you hit a nade, you hit a couple of shots. You know, so you feel like, oh, I, I did fine, I did okay. But no, you didn't. And the problem with that, though, is that an autopiloted Rissa will lose just as many games as an autopiloted Winston but you won't really feel it. Right. So like you, you will not get value out of this nade. Right. You really yeah. didn't. You missed many opportunities that were not even that particularly hard. And so like, I, I think that's a good assessment. Like with Kiriko, it's like you're so much more directly involved. You also get directly punished for any mistakes. With Ana, it's all the indirect punishment that you may not right. put two and two together. So like you said, I, I think that's, that's actually a good point. So like here, it's like you might not die for that nade but your team will. So, so where would you rotate to? So we could kind of where like my uh, Kiri is at at the moment, and yeah. then once they see where they're positioned at, probably a little bit closer once the sentry is done. Yep, 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 yep. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Okay, let's uh, let's keep going here. I like the patience of the nade. I don't like the placement of the nade. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I was going for the honor. I just missed. Yeah, that's fine. It was reasonable enough. Good sleep, though, by the way. Thank you. But yeah, again, another fight where it's like, you know, I missed the nade a little bit, yeah, but I did hit the sleep dart, I hit some healing, I didn't die. Why are we oh, losing? This might nice. Good try. All right, yeah, so it was a good try. If mm -hmm. you'd had time to position anywhere you'd want here, what would have been the solution to this plan? What do you think? Um, I'd probably either stay like directly behind here 
Mm -hmm, they just mm -hmm. tried to poke out on the right hand side to mm -hmm. heal the tank and okay. carry whenever they start pushing forward. Sure. Check this out. The one time where this might have actually made <laughs> sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I saw my tracer here and I'm like, you know, we got to go around this back window. And even if not that, this is okay because this puts you on the other side of back window too, right? Right. Just something to kind of think about, right? Like, what, what are you seeing so far? Little details, big things. What do you got? Um, I'm just kind of using nade whenever I feel like using nade. I'm not using it when it would be best for the team. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And whenever we're kind of engaging, I'm sure. not really recognizing whenever those team fights are starting. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like my position could definitely be a lot better, and just the sleep usage, of course. Sure. So, so what about the positioning specifically? I'm just not playing to my best sight lines with the comp set. I'm playing scared in some instances. In some instances, I'm just like kind of running at them. I take into account like what my teammates are saying. Like if they're saying like I'm playing bad, it affects the way I'm playing. If they're just like being toxic or begging for heals, it makes me anxious. And then like I play a little bit differently because of that. Uh, yeah, it's like you're tougher than me because I don't join voice. You know, I don't, I, I just, I don't want to get flamed because, oh, Sparlow is strong. I'm just saying that like, if you're going to like delve into the swamp, you need to wear boots, you know? Right. So I feel like whenever I do try to play Ana, I try to uh, talk and chat and like shot call and call all the yep. ults and things like that. Cause it just helps me concentrate better. I think like addressing that is going to be what allows you to actually apply the stuff that we talk about the review, you know? Right. It's obviously, it's going to be like, oh, I need to do this, do to do this, do to do this. It's going to slip right back into old autopilot slash thinking about your teammates' habits. And it's going to, like, you've not made any progress at all. Mm hmm so, Okay. Um, let's keep going. Any questions so far? Um, uh, not so far. Okay. You're playing fine. There's just always value to be found. Yeah. Like, even that, right? Like, meaningless. Yeah. You need to assess the situation. Like, and just for sometimes that's meaningful. Like, I mean, if that's a Widowmaker or something, like, it's not the end of the world, right? But, like, assess mm -hmm. the situation now within the information you have now, right? Right. You could press tab. You can see the Winston. You also know a brawl is about to start about six, seven seconds, right? So, mm -hmm. you know. You know, even, even something like assessing the fact that, hey, Winston's right click has a freaking 40 meter range now, <laughs> right? That's something I'm still trying to get used to, right? So, yeah. and this is one of those fights where it's like, maybe you look at this fight and go, oh yeah, I trolled that fight. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe you don't. And that's, and you obviously know you did. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's, uh, you know, something to consider. Really hard if they don't have a Tracer or a Sombra or something, then I don't care about my cooldowns nearly as much. But if they do, then, like, I'm more, I care about it a little bit more, but I just kind of toss them out whenever I'm not getting dove and it's a problem. All right. Oh, here's the, here's the thing. If, if you're playing versus dive, like the composition you're playing versus right now, even some dive element, Winston Reaper, you know, at some point those guys are going to go aggressive on your back line. Yeah. Have your sleep dart. If you see an opportunity for nade earlier, I think there's a little bit more flexibility with nade, but certainly a sleep dart, use it versus dive defensively, right? The, the mm -hmm. problem always happens, like, what happens if they're playing characters that, you know, just kind of do this and hold an angle and, and, and don't really do much? Like, for example, you saw it with the Sigma Bastion Reaper, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what do I do versus a composition like that when I'm never really going to get dove? Well, the answer is really, really, really simple. If you're playing versus dive in your position, like, let's put you in green right here. Can you see this, like, down here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you're going to, at some point, get pressured, right? And so you need that sleep dart, or you want to have that sleep dart to allow you to hold that position safely. But see, what you do when you're playing versus spam, or anything that's not going to directly force your sleep dart, is you need to go looking for sleep dart and nade value. But you right. don't go looking for sleep dart and nade value by holding you know, a turret position 65 million miles away. What you <laughs> do is you hold a more aggressive angle, and you say, mm -hmm. hey guys, I'm going to be doing more damage, more healing, and getting better nade angles from this position, mm -hmm unless you come after me. And the Reinhardt goes, well, crap, I have to go push on this, and then you sleep him. Oh, yeah. You get what I'm saying? It's the insurance right. that you have that, that you kind of force the issue by, I wouldn't even say positioning more aggressively because people are going to take that and mean like, I should position right directly next to my tank. But you should try to find a better, slightly greedier sight line, um, maybe a deeper angle, something along those lines, like over here. Something that we're like, an honest shouldn't be allowed to position there, but she has her sleep dart in aid.
So mm-hmm. it's if you're like, I just don't really think about my sleep that I need much. Well, you should because they're your insurance. It's your get out of jail free card. So if you're not getting that get out of jail free card forced by an enemy dive composition, then you need to be pulling more aggressively so that people try to duel you, if that makes any right. sense. Um, yeah. Like think about like the Reaper Bastion. Okay, you need to be thinking, oh, there's nothing to dive me, so I'm going to play a pretty aggressive sightline. We talked about that the very first fight. Go walk to point. Take a very mm-hmm. nasty sightline on the back line, um, and what are they going to do about it, right? Your Reaper's going to TP on you? I've got sleep there. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're, you're not going to be good. So I look at this situation here. Okay, so let's say that this is like a Ryan comp, right? Like, let's say this is like an Arisa composition or something like this. Once your team gets out of the choke, you could even walk in here and nade the floor and then mm-hmm. back out, right? Ryan backs up, Arisa backs up, Sigma backs up. Like, let's say they take an angle here. Again, it's like, I, what's the greediest sight that I can take that I can hold with the sleep dart? I'm baiting attention. I'm baiting that Ram. I'm baiting that Ryan. I'm baiting that Arisa to push on me. Um, mm-hmm. You have to be smart with it, but I think, like, the idea is that you still want to be calculated with your cooldowns, but you just shift it. You, you shift your mentality with it a little bit. Right. And then, obviously, here, it's like, I don't think you need to be doing much of that because that needs questionable. Um, because... There's running Reaper Winston. So you, in theory, if you're positioned properly, will be getting pressure. Mm-hmm. And you'll be punishing that pressure. I still see a lot of heal botting right here, right? Yeah, yeah. So like here, take a pot shot on Winston. Take a pot mm-hmm. shot on Ana from across the map. Nice shots again. It certainly puts some pressure out here. This chip damage is meaningless. Or chip healing, excuse me. Love to see it. Now you've got them in the back foot. Hit the nade, let's go. Unfortunate. Good shots though. Really nice shots. Nice pocket as well. Nice shots again. Nice. I go back to damage. Nice. Good nade. Good try in the nade anyway. Good nano. I mean, do you see? You're Crispin. Whenever you're... Do you see how you're like, okay, you didn't even need to use your sleep dart because he had to dive you. You're deadlifting this fight. You have to, like, Ana is so... If Ana's not pressured and you have a good sightline... You do so much damage and so much right. healing. They have to pressure you, and then you put your hit sleep dart or you put your nade out, and then that's over. So force the issue is the way to look about it. Good idea. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's yeah. a good idea, though, right? Right. That's what we want. Like they're walking forward. Your queen is walking forward. This nade is really expensive because if you nade this and they disengage, you will force cooldowns. You will right. force cooldowns, and that will totally screw. even if it just delays their engage by ten seconds. That's that's gonna get your nade back. So. Risky sleep dart, but if you think that that Winston has used what's going to allow him to dive you, then it's okay. So, for example, if you sleep dart this Winston and you're confident mm-hmm. the sleep is going to hit, and you're mm-hmm. confident that Winston's going to lose a chunk of HP and get his bubble forced, are right. you as concerned about not having sleep dart anymore? No. No. In theory, things like Primal Rage or Reaper TP can definitely complicate that issue, but right. if your sleep dart forces enough offensive pressure that you're, you're then it's, it's okay to quote unquote waste it. Huge JQ ult. Good pocket. I say that as you choke two shots. I did. That's okay. Still winnable. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Just... No way. Object permanence. <laughs> uh, object permanence. He jumped up and I was just like, what do I do? <laughs> that is that is hilarious. That was really I was, funny. I was freaking out. <laughs> Got Goomba stomped. <laughs> Holy did. crap. But see, this is where like, you know, you're, you're heal botting here, right? Yeah. But think about what this positioning is, right? Look at your sightline here. You mm-hmm. see this? I mean, look at this nade. Look at the shots it could be landing right now. Right. And you see how that would be kind of going what we're talking about, even though it's versus dive, you would be forcing that issue. Is kind of mm-hmm. what I'm saying, right? Like they have to push now. If if you're if you're a fielder here, which you should be, you're you're forced. You're getting dove right now because if you don't, they have to disengage. Uh huh. Right. You have a good sideline. I love your positioning right now. Do something with it. I mean, it wasn't particularly well placed, but you know what? It forced the issue, and there it is. You see that? But mm-hmm. the problem is, is that because you got a halfway decent nade, even though they're forcing the issue, it's not forced well. Check it out. You see this? Mm-hmm. That's on, so this dive has no teeth at all. Right. Zero chance. So you really, you panicked on the sleep dart, which was stupid. Um, yeah. But there's, you're under no pressure whatsoever right now. And then now, force the issue again. You have your sleep mm-hmm. dart, you have your nade, force the issue. Poorly placed, right? I yep. think the key thing for you when you're missing these nades, 
Um, let me know what you think. It, it feels like you don't have a specific target in mind, and you should. That's exactly what it is, is I just toss it in like the group that I see, and then I hope that it lands as many people as possible. Who should you, who should you be nading right now? This is a trick question. Um, probably the Reaper Winston, just to it, try to... Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah, matter. I mean, it yeah. really doesn't matter. I think I think I think this is one of the scenarios where like a nade on Cassidy kills him. Mm-hmm. But a nade on Reaper Winston is massive space. Totally shuts down the push. Which one's more right. valuable? The eh. Reaper Winston. I don't I, I don't really care, to be honest with you. Because a kill on yeah. Cassidy is great too. You've got the follow up. This guy is if you hit this this nade, he's dead. He's dead. Mm-hmm. Um so I don't know. I don't think it matters. Just pick one and hit it. Yeah. Not in between. <laughs> yeah. Turns out the Cassie died anyway, so all right, well there you go. See, they're not forcing the issue here. Like they're ignoring you and they're paying the price. And this is where you can be like, oh, I still have CDs, so I'm gonna keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. Why? Mm-hmm. Because they don't have any cooldowns Correct. and it's better to play aggressive. Right. And you you have yours. You see this? So if that yeah. Reaper Winston turn on you, you're not gonna die. Right. It's gonna be dirty. Force the issue, they don't know what to do, they're still disengaging. And that's it. A soldier has to lose space. Doomfist uses his CDs, but doesn't actually like go in and because he's still less than half HP. So then now their Moira is so focused on, well, actually really the Reaper is so focused on holding space, actually pushing, but who's not peeking right now on their team? Basically, like Every, everyone. Right, Doomfist still hasn't really properly engaged. Soldier's been basically AFK for the last four seconds. And so Reaper messes up his timing because he thinks, surely we're going to push now, guys, not realizing that his backline is still recovering from being naded. So I know it's a bit of a stretch, but it's a good nade. <laughs> for sure. See, the worst that the run can do. What's the worst that the run can do? Charge at me, but I can just sleep him. Exactly, exactly. That's kind of what we talked about, right? Where like mm-hmm. you, you, you can earn that position. Right. You know? And obviously, if we want to dig really deep here, ah. yeah, I know. <laughs> it's it's just it's just not something that you want to play. It's not a game that you want to play. Instead, I right. want to be like, I have sleep dart, therefore I don't have to need a shield. You know, mm-hmm. I can take an angle around the shield. And like I said, obviously with the power of hindsight here too, you know, like that you only have pulse, and they have coal and high noon. So like, this is the only thing that you guys are going to do is pop off through cooldowns, and that's not yeah. it, right? I I do well sometimes, but it's mo- mainly just the positioning that I'm in that enables me to mm-hmm. pop off and like do those good plays. I'm wasting a lot of cooldowns and not really looking for good opportunities for them. Right. So so I think the question always is, why are you wasting those cooldowns? What what are you missing? I think I'm just tossing them because I'm not getting dove and I'm not really thinking about it. I'm just like, oh well, if I land it, then that'd be cool. But if I don't, then I'm not worried about it because they don't have a dive target on me. Right, 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 right. Not realizing the very fact that they don't have a dive target means that you have more responsibility to get value elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Okay, okay. What else? Um, Maybe that's mostly it, really. I think like I do well with positioning. Like Sometimes if we're winning and we're doing well in fights, but as soon as we lose a fight, I go back to playing scared. Just like I played the low ground instead of trying to rotate to the high ground. Because I was like, oh, I don't want my Zara to die. I'm like, my Zara will die whenever I rotate high ground. That was like what I was thinking in that moment. Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't want anyone to die while I'm trying to rotate. Right. And like, if I did rotate, then it would have been a better fight overall. Sure. And like, we sure. Pro- probably could have won. But right. Right. I think obviously there's going to be times where like maybe you can't rotate mid fight, but that, that that's why it makes it so important to kind of make these reads and adjustments mid fight instead of like kind of coasting. So that you don't mm-hmm. have to like whatever you can, you don't want to have to rotate to those positions and lose LOS mid fight. So then make sure that you do it pre fight. 